Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Brian, I was doing something this morning, and uh, okay. I did something. <laughs> well, usually people do. <laughs> Well, sometimes when you're doing something, it never comes to the did part. But uh, so uh, I've set us up a new way that people can donate to the show. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Stripe has come out with a new easy way to make little payment pages. So, I mean, they've been easy before, but this made it super duper easy. I was about to say, it hasn't been terribly difficult for people to uh, give us money so far. I mean, other than the motivational aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, but also we do get complaints. I don't like PayPal. I don't like Patreon. Oh, everybody's taking too much. Blah, 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 blah. Well, now we've made it super easy. You can come straight to the source. So you can set up for one-time donations or recurring donations if you are so inclined. That'll be over at GOG.show slash donate. And it goes straight through the credit card processor. No secondary middlemen taking that pound of flesh from us like we talked about on the last episode. The the rise of the middleman. <laughs> okay. So. Well, I've heard many good things about Stripe, so I'm looking forward to trying it firsthand. I've used them for years. They are, I mean, you remember the old days with pay, setting up payment processors, Brian? Oh, yes. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Yeah. No, this is, it, it's a brave new world. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, oh, my God. I mean, just the technical side of it, all, all the different plugins that you had to do and all the hooks and all the... All that sort of stuff. but uh, And then the other side of it where you basically had to put down your firstborn child to the bank to get them to let you take credit cards. And, oh, yes, what a nightmare. Oh, yeah, and just making sure that your server was compliant. Oh, yep, that was fun. <laughs> that was so much fun. Uh, so glad those days are you over. You kids have it so easy these days. You fucking do. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, a uh, couple of people have sent this uh, story to us, and we talked about it when it first got announced and, and uh, how ridiculous it was. But uh, Amazon is rolling out uh, their – I can't remember what they call it. Sidewalk? Sidewalk. Amazon Sidewalk, which is the uh, – we are going to go ahead and take that bandwidth that you pay for and give it to your neighbors for free. Ah, socialism. Uh, program. <laughs> yes. <laughs> socialism of a sort. Uh, and, you know – in and of itself, it's not, you know, a terribly horrible thing if you really wanted to do it. Uh, there are some security issues, obviously, but, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit of internet socialism, I suppose. The problem that I have with this, as is the problem that we have with almost all services, is that it is opt-out, not opt-in. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. So that is coming in, I believe, nine days. Uh, so now's your chance. Uh, just uh, if this is your friendly uh, reminder, go into your settings. They've made it at least somewhat easy. Um, I mean, as easy as anything can be with the Alexa app, which is a cluster F of epic proportions. But open up your Alexa app, go to more and settings and then account settings and then select Amazon Sidewalk and turn that bastard off. Now, you would think that there would be a very easy way to do this by saying, hey, lady in the tube, turn off sidewalk. But well, nope. <laughs> that would make sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a voice controlled device. You'd think that you could get to some of the settings using your voice. But no, nope, nope, nope. So uh, when this came in, I went and looked at my Ring app because I don't need to have the Alexa app on my phone because I just have mm-hmm. the Ring cameras. And there's nothing in there. And my hardware is really old. So I'm pretty sure I'm safe. But mm-hmm. um, And I still haven't gotten rid of it completely yet, uh, but I did set a much more aggressive uh, Eero time policy when the cameras are on and actually connected to the internet. Basically, mm-hmm. if I'm gone or asleep, then they turn on. <laughs> Those are the two options. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, there's that. Uh, we just talked about an easy way for all of you to give us money. One of the ways that we weren't going to do it was using Apple's paid podcast subscription service, but we couldn't do that anyways because they have went, oh, not ready yet. So not coming out this month. They've pushed that to at least June. Well, yeah. I guess it is June now. Today's June 1st. It is June 1st. Come on, Apple. Get on it. <laughs> or don't <laughs> because nobody cares. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know, hundreds of people have already signed up for this. I'm like, out of the millions of podcasts out there, hundreds have rushed to the gate to give you their $20 and give you that 30%. Well, to be fair, of the millions of podcasts on Apple services, 100 are active. That's true. That's true. And so we maybe are one they, of them. Maybe they do actually have a good hit rate then. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> There's an awful lot of three episodes of podcasts out there that stopped about six years ago. Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, back in the news again, we talked about this last week. Uh, Twitter is back with verification for their accounts. Yeah. And what did we predict was going to happen, Jason? Exactly this. They have shut down after just one week because they got too many. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe we have a global AI shortage. Oh, I mean sweatshops in the Philippines for people to actually go through and do this because everybody is vying for, for uh, you know, that AI time. You know how in the old days you'd have to like book time on the Unix machine? Now mm -hmm. you have, bo have to book time with the AI sweatshops in the Philippines and Facebook is taking up probably most of the time. And so now Twitter tried to get in on it and they realized, oh man, we, we don't have enough Filipinos out there to do our verification. Guess we're going to have to slow down. <laughs> I I mean, I, okay, again, like going back to uh, why we're not successful 101, Jason, um, when we <laughs> when we would do these sorts, when we were about to roll out a feature that we knew would be labor intensive, what do you do? You staff up for it. What do you do these days? Fuck all. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Oh, no, it's only the most requested feature on our service that we've had off for well over a year. And we've only wildly publicized it everywhere <laughs> that it's coming back. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> of Great. course this is going to happen. Of course. It's the first thing that came to my mind when they announced it. I'm like, it's going to last about three days. Well, they beat you by four. Oh, well, that's true. Fucking Twitter. In the news. Well, uh, you know. We could do a whole NFT headline segment again, but why bother? I think we have reached peak NFT uh, with this one. Ralph sent us uh, this uh, article. He says, hi, Grumps. This article describes what could be the ultimate NFT property encompassing this absurdity of the concept. Can't wait to get started on creating my next invisible masterpiece. I can use the cash. And this is the world's first invisible sculpture. Sells for a whopping $18,000. And this is uh, by an Italian artist, Salvatore Garou. Garou? Uh, uh, Garau, Garau. Who cares? Who cares? He didn't do anything and he sold it. Yeah. Now, so good on him. No, but I'm, uh, you should know that this invisible work of art represents a void, a technically empty space that is actually occupied by the energy of the sculpture. Now, here we go. I want to I want to point <laughs> something out here. here. Here's one of his quotes. The successful outcome of the auction testifies to an irrefutable fact. The void is nothing but a space full of energy. And even if we empty it and nothing remains, according to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, that nothingness has a weight. I looked up Salvatore Garou. Uh, what I know where that void is. It's in between the ears of the person that bought this. <laughs> Physics is not listed on his fucking resume. And uh, <laughs> yeah, go look up Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and you will know that it has nothing to do with what you're saying. Look, look okay. But so here's the thing. Now, uh, I, I get it. I, 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 you, you remember very well. I dated, I dated somebody for a very long time that was in the art world. And yes. I had to go to many, 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 many art shows with her. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and all I would do was go around and read the blurbs about the pieces of art. And they were always bullshit just like this. Of course. Complete and utter bullshit. So I will give it to him. I do believe that this guy is a real artist trying to sell his bullshit. And he did it. But the, just the NFT aspect is okay. See, the thing is, I didn't see NFT in the actual article, but uh, uh, yeah, I didn't see okay. NFT anywhere in that article. I think he actually just sold the void. Well, but, same thing, right? True, true. We'll get to that in a little <laughs> bit. He did start off, uh, Salvatore did start off his career as a drummer. That's right. In a band called it Stormy all Six. falls into place. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I <laughs> thought you might like that. And I just love for something so intangible and ephemeral, it does actually have a physical smell of bullshit. So yes, yes, it does. Go, go on, Salvatore. <laughs> I saw this one over at the BBC. Buying a pink NFT cat was a crypto nightmare. And uh, she goes through the entire process of trying to buy an NFT and how, how stupid it is and how much money you actually have to pay on top of it. But uh, this is the best part of it. Uh, this guy, David Garrard, he wrote a book called The 50-Foot Blockchain, or Attack of mm -hmm. the 50-Foot Blockchain, sorry. And I just love this. NFTs are a new form of magic beans that crypto fanatics can sell for money. But all you're buying is a receipt. The market is completely fake. <laughs> I love the fact that he, he nailed it with all you're buying is a receipt. That's it. That's all and you're getting. And it's not even a good, useful one like the CVS ones. I know. You can actually use those as teepee. Yep. 
<laughs> and Matthew sent us a link of uh, finally putting machine learning to some good use. Uh, this is from MIT. And of course, it does talk about machine learning, but you had to have it. You got to know what's coming in the headline. Artificial intelligence oh, systems <laughs> could help counter the spread of disinformation. <sighs> I know, I know. I'm still beating that drum. I, I have to realize the journalists have just decided that machine learning and artificial intelligence are interchangeable, often in the same article, and that's just <laughs> the way it is. Uh, but this is uh, something they built at the MIT Lincoln Lab Laboratory. They call it the RIO program, and it automatically detects and analyzes social media accounts that spread disinformation across a network. All of them. Um, <laughs> All of them, yes. Well, the goal is to kind of narrow it down to find, you know, as we've known and has been widely reported, it's basically a handful of accounts that basically cause all these problems. Russia. So what they're trying to do is yeah, – bots, Russia, and grandma. Um, <laughs> what they're trying to do is go through and find a, and and analyze quickly and be able to find these accounts so, you know, they can give this information to Twitter, which will then do nothing with it. Ah, no, but Twitter may start labeling your tweets based on how wrong you are, comes a new article from Gizmodo. <laughs> right. Uh, so far, there are three levels of misinformation warning labels. Get the latest, stay informed, and misleading. <laughs> so I don't know where they're going to get the cycles to do this on top of, unless they did hook into Rio. Who knows? But Well, you know, they pulled everybody off the verification program for this, obviously. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Soon there's not going to be anything left on social media. <laughs> I'm not sure anybody actually works at Twitter anymore. I, I think I don't think anybody's there. I just think the thing is running by itself. It's like God and the workbench. It's, it's Jack walked away and that's that. It's literally just a PR guy writing tweets and stories. That's it. Nothing has changed. Uh, but we didn't even put in the fact that they have a new uh, subscription thing coming up called Twitter Blue. Which yeah. lets you undo a tweet and change the color of your page, which I thought you could already change the color of your page when you go down to profiles. But when hey. do I get to add twinkly stars? I don't know. Oh, actually, I saw one of the funniest things I actually saw on Twitter was like some kid had yeah, posted. I know what you're uh, say. Boy, I wish it, if only you could put uh, the song that you were currently listening to on your Twitter page so people would know about it. And somebody was like, wow, we finally reached the generation that doesn't even remember MySpace. Exactly. <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> oh, it was great, and I felt so old. Uh, well, <laughs> it goes, man. Anyways, another fun thing happened on Twitter. Uh, uh, there is a company called Lemonade, which is a fast-growing machine learning-powered insurance app. And you know, you can we can all sit and say, "Wow, what a horrible idea!" But it is the way everything's going. Sadly, uh, of course, they're going to start to use AI. And uh, they put out a demonstration of how their AI analyzes videos of customers when determining if their claims are fraudulent. Needless to say, it did not go well. No shit. Really? <laughs> yes. So all of a sudden, people that were using Lemonade to get basically cheaper insurance found out that Lemonade is collecting more than 16,000 data points about its users, 100 times more data than traditional insurance carriers. And then all of a sudden, they realized... Do we want this to be happening? No, no. No, we do not. And do we want an AI to analyze our video saying, look at my car, it got hit. Oh, wait. Are there problems with AI? Like institutional <laughs> racism? I think there might be, Jason. There might be. There might be. Hmm. Is this a good idea? I don't think so. But I do like it's called AI Jim. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, and there's the, the whole story in there about how they're going to charge Jews more because they have more candles at Hanukkah. <laughs> which represents a greater fire risk, so they have to be charged more money. <laughs> I mean, you can't make that shit up. Come on. No, you really can't make this shit up. It's pretty great. It's a great story and well worth a read. So here's the fun part. Out. Yeah, the funny <clears throat> part about this is, now this is like a sausage maker tweeting pictures of the abattoir where they're killing the cows. Nobody wants yes. to see how the sausage is made. Yes. We, we know. We know how this is working. We just don't want to really know how it's working. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I did an interview. Well, I, I produced an interview with another uh, insurance, like a real insurance uh, behind the scenes data guy. And they've been using um, voice analysis and voice stress analysis for a long time to figure out if you're lying or not. So this is nothing new. They're just smart enough because they've been around the block a few times to never tell anybody, <laughs> or at least not the public. <laughs> So. I mean, I suppose we should laud them for transparency, I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I think they get a ding for dumb fuckery. <clears throat> yeah. Now, speaking of dings for dumb fuckery, WhatsApp has walked back their privacy policy. 
<laughs> so we were talking about this. Uh, and now that Facebook owned it, everybody was worried what was going to happen. And one of the things that happened was, here's our new privacy policy. And if you don't accept it, we're going to basically start uh, – first, we're going to lock down your account. And if you still don't accept it after X amount of time, you're not going to be able to use your account at all. And then you're going to get kicked off the system all because you don't want to click on something that says – that you're not going to read anyways, that you've clicked on a thousand times on a thousand different websites. But whatever. Click this privacy policy or we kill this puppy. Exactly. Uh, now they went, oh, okay, maybe we're not going to do that because people started to leave the app in droves. <laughs> well, <laughs> so rather than have a ghost town, they went, oh, okay, never mind, never mind. And of course, they said there's confusion and misinformation around the updated policy. No, there's no, fucking not. No, it's fucking not at all. <laughs> the only confusion and misinformation that was going on was in what WhatsApp itself, not the rest of us. We all knew. That's why people left. Yeah, you're trying to hold them hostage, and they're like, well, it, no, see ya, <laughs> later. Yeah, and another case of dumb fuckery being rolled back, Venmo is now letting users hide their friends list following the Joe Biden discovery. Right. <laughs> so somebody at Venmo finally went, huh, maybe financial stuff shouldn't be social. Or at no. least let's give people the option to start to hide things better. No, 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 that's not, that's not, the, that's not the conclusion they came to. The conclusion was, oh, shit, we got caught. And yeah, now it's basically. a big thing, and now we have to roll it back. We have to give it to them. If this, if this Biden thing had never come out, it never would have been an issue for them. They would have just kept on doing what they're doing. This is just yeah. they got their hand caught in the cookie jar in a very bad and public way. So they have By to the do way, this. All they added was a toggle buried in the privacy settings, buried under the settings that basically just sets friends list visibility to zero right next and to right next to the not, sidewalk app that you can turn off. yes and of course it's opt it's not going to switch on automatically you have to go in and turn it on to let, let people see that sort of stuff of course so. yeah so while everybody else has been zigging due to user outcry google well they decided to zag <laughs> Google has decided to make it even harder to find Android privacy settings. This has come out. Uh, this has come out because of the uh, Arizona antitrust lawsuit over phone tracking. But uh, Business Insider is reporting that freshly unredacted documents in the case suggest Google made Android privacy settings harder to find. Uh, when they tested OS releases that surfaced privacy features, the company reportedly saw greater use of those features Go figure. and decided that's a problem. <laughs> And aimed to put them deeper into the menu system. They also successfully pressured phone brands like LG to bury location settings as they were popular, according to Arizona's attorneys. Popular to so, who? So, yes, <laughs> if you give people privacy settings that are easy to find, they will turn them on. And that is bad for these companies. So they're going to hide them again. Yep. Yep. Uh, the return of the dark design pattern. Great. <laughs> it's been a while. I love this one. Watch Elon Musk's boring company test its Tesla tunnel system in Las Vegas with members of the public. We are all beta testers now, Brian. Period. Well, if you're going to do it in any city in the world, get them good and drunk in Vegas. Exactly. <laughs> hey, the, yeah, the buffet is on the other side of the tunnel. Just get in the car. What went into the tunnel in Vegas stayed in the tunnel in Vegas. I was watching the video on this and uh, a little cramped for my taste. Uh yeah, my uh, my claustrophobia kicked in, and then there was one video where they got up to 116 miles an hour mm -hmm. in a Tesla in this tunnel with a real driver with about, I don't know, but like maybe less than a foot to spare on either side before you hit the wall. If yeah. that thing would have hit the wall, it would have flipped, done a but uh, it would have corkscrewed basically, and then probably exploded. Well, on the plus side, he's created the only place on the planet where I would actually trust autonomous driving. There's nothing to hit. There's no stop signs. You just go straight. Here's the fucked up part. They weren't using autonomous driving during the of test. Not. They had real drivers. This is yeah. the, I'm with you. This is the one time I'm like, perfect, perfect fucking use case. This yep. is what you want. It's got lines on the road. There's no pedestrians. Now, if, if the guy in front of you was a dick and like opened the sunroof and held up a stop sign, that would have been awesome. But... Now, if only there was some sort of technology that's been in use for hundreds of years that goes into a tunnel that moves people. <laughs> I know. That wasn't a car that actually held a lot of people instead of, oh, say four. Hmm. Yeah. hmm. What could that be? I don't know. Huh. Uh, we'll have to think about that. Maybe some of our users remember that yeah. technology from back in the day. I know none of which you speak. Yeah. I don't either. I can't imagine what we could possibly do with such technology. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I'm sure somebody's figure it out someday. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Tesla, 
<laughs> and their uh, their leave from California to Texas because they don't want to pay taxes now that they've uh, reaped the benefits of all of California's, uh, you know, everything that he got here to get his company started, including all the engineers that came from California universities that we paid taxes for. Fuck you, Elon. Uh, he took off and left for Texas because, you know, no taxes, but a uh, bit of a snag. Bit of a snag. All right. Unfortunately, in Texas, there are some rules uh, about uh, how you can sell cars and where they come from. And apparently now he has to actually ship his cars out of Texas and then bring them back into Texas to be able to sell them to Texans. <sighs> oh, and of course he's saying, <laughs> of course, uh, Elon is basically saying, uh, I, we sure would appreciate you changing that law for us. Of course, of course. I, I mean, my first reaction to this was, wait, there, there are rules in Texas? <laughs> I thought... <laughs> <laughs> it's this the one. The one, yeah, the one he didn't actually check. It's like, yeah. oh. Oh, man, I moved here and I can't even sell my cars here. Derp. Whoops. <laughs> now, let's be honest. How many Texans actually want to buy a Tesla? Uh, well, they get the mod that lets them put gas in it. Today's episode is sponsored by Private Internet Access, America's number one virtual private network, also known as a VPN. Even if you use incognito mode, your internet service provider is storing your browsing data and many times even selling it. But Private Internet Access, or PIA, can help. PIA encrypts and reroutes your internet traffic through one of its own servers, hiding your data from your internet service provider or network admin. And with servers in over 75 countries, you can get unrestricted access to geoblock content around the world. PIA comes with an easy-to-use app, and browser extensions for all devices, a rock-solid privacy policy, open-source security, advanced customization settings, and it was just ranked the fastest VPN in the world by PC Mag. If you sign up with PIA right now, you can take advantage of a special deal only for GOG listeners. By using our link, gog.show slash VPN, you can get complete digital privacy for less than $2 a month and four extra months for free, which means only $1.98 a month and up to 83% off. That's so much more inexpensive than virtually every other VPN on the market. And if you get it right now, you can take PIA's 30-day risk-free challenge. You can try it out for 30 days and see if you like it. If not, just return it for a full refund. So go to GOG.show slash VPN and try out the best VPN on the planet completely risk-free. That's GOG.show slash VPN. Media Candy. Brian, when I went to San Diego, I watched uh, a new movie on Netflix called Army of the Dead. Zombies, okay. you know, zombies. Haven't there been movies called Army of the Dead before? I feel like I, when I saw you post this in there, I was like, oh, you went back and rewatched some old series. Uh, I, I, yeah, you got Army of Darkness and you've got oh, okay, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Uh, I think Army of the Dead is a new one by Zack Snyder, um, mm. who likes to make really weird DC long cut movies. And he 2 did- p.m. coffee, Crash of the Dead. Yeah, and he did he yeah, did okay. one of the of the dead movies before. So, uh we we you know, we'd had a few cocktails at that point and we popped it on. And uh it's a zombie movie. <laughs> it's a fucking zombie <laughs> movie. I I I did love reading Sean Bonner's like just like 18-page diatribe against this movie and I just I just wanted to say, it's a fucking zombie movie. Who cares? You know what? <laughs> he he would have liked it if it would have come out as an NFT. <laughs> Probably. Sorry, Sean. Uh, I can't help it. I know. Um <laughs> Yeah, it was it, it was not a not a uh, very good zombie movie. I will give it that. Uh, okay. Not a lot of character development. Not a lot of plot. Uh, too many mul- or, uh, MacGuffins. Not mulligans. MacGuffins. He needs to take it's a there. mulligan on this one and redo it. But there were Is there of- usually a lot of character development with zombies. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes you get some good ones. Shaun of okay. the Dead, for you know, for example, best zombie movie ever made. In my humble yes, opinion, I agree. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a three star. Just get fucked up and watch it and enjoy the ride type of movie. This is not something <laughs> that you want to sit there and dissect like it's a fucking Oscar nominee. OK, OK. Um, I'm halfway through Crime of the Century. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. There's some bad people out there everywhere. Newsflash. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm very angry at the end of this. Me and my roommate right. both were very after the end of the first part because it's like two hours per part it's long it's another alex gibney documentary so you know yeah take take that you know what you're getting into take that with what you what you will because you know documentaries always have a point of view but this one's pretty cut and dry i gotta say um (laughs) uh we know what uh what the outcome is on some of this stuff but man um 
the politicians that aided and abetted these guys should all be actually everybody in this in this documentary that was part of the opioid crisis um, should be taken out back, lined up against a wall and shot. I mean, I 100 percent. They should this, this right. should be capital punishment for these assholes for the the sheer magnitude of people they killed. It's ridiculous. So, OK, if you want to get really angry and learn a lot about uh, how the pharma companies work, by all means, if you want a happy movie, uh, I got nothing for you because Army of the Dead wasn't a very happy movie either. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I saw something uh, by accident. I was on the couch uh, reading and my wife, who was a huge Friends fan, watched the Friends, the reunion, which has been all over the news because I don't know. People like reason. it, apparently. People really like Friends. Um yeah, I uh, they're old, made me feel old, uh, and I watched more Friends than I've ever seen before in my life by just glancing up every now and then. I've never seen a full episode of Friends, period. I, I, I think I've probably seen one full episode at one point 20 years ago. Yeah, I've never seen – I've never made it more than three minutes in. Between that and – and people are going to probably yell at me for this one too – Seinfeld, I've never seen a full episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> I never loved Seinfeld the way most people do. I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, so, you know, it seemed fine. Um, my wife seemed happy with it. There's, you know, obviously it, it is very rose-colored glasses uh, look back. There's not going to be anything controversial. And uh, if you were liked friends, you'll probably like this. Uh, I, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, the other <laughs> thing I picked... <laughs> <laughs> damning with no praise. Right. Damning with no praise, yes. The other thing that I picked up courtesy of my wife this week is uh, she was in the back office area working, and, and I heard some semi-familiar strains. And I was like, huh, that sounds so familiar but different. Uh, apparently, Moby released a new album. Uh, it's called Reprise, and he has gone back and reworked uh, many of his uh, songs from over the years. Now, I am a big Moby fan, uh, so I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'll give this a listen. Why not? Uh, you know, Play was just a stunning album. I, I, I know it's everybody's heard it so often, even if they don't like Moby, because it was in every commercial and every movie for about 10 years. Uh, but that does not take away from how brilliant that album actually was. I mean, it changed everything, and that's why it was everywhere for 10 years. Uh, but I, So I went and listened to Moby Reprise, and... Um, if you wanted to take every single really good Moby song and rewrite it so it sounds like you're in a spa and about to fall asleep and get a nice massage, this is the album for you. All right. Otherwise, go back and just listen to the original albums. Okay. Much better. <laughs> and if you want ambient Moby, may I recommend Moby's album called Ambient that came out in 1993, uh, which list basically lived in my clock radio CD player because I'm old back in college and was my go-to just play it all night long album. And it's wonderful. So, Ambient says what it is on the tin. It does exactly what it said on the CD, whatever that is kids. <laughs> and speaking of stuff that we listened to, our discord channel had a big link that everybody was getting into and it's how well can you hear audio quality? And it's on NPR's website and uh, you can go give that a listen. I tried it out and uh, I thought my ears would be dead at this point because old and because concerts and all that sort of stuff. And if I use my AirPods, I uh, could not tell the difference. But when I put on my fancy Sennheiser uh, headphones, I could hear the difference from four out of five. So not so bad. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Uh, I haven't given it a shot yet because I haven't been in a place where I can listen without dogs barking or TVs blaring. So right. uh, I, I definitely want to give it a shot because I know my ears have gotten better since I started podcasting, but you know, way too many punk rock shows as a kid uh, with no earplugs and uh, the fact that we're old now. So you lose all those <laughs> high frequencies. So yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I'll try it. Ups and doodads. Well, I'm trying to get everything settled here before I actually do my final move to Toronto. And one of the things that I'm doing is basically taking care of my mom and setting up all her technology. So hopefully it'll stay together with duct tape and all that until I can visit for Christmases and, and all other types of things. And one of the things I needed to do was get her a new tablet because she had a very old uh, Android tablet that she would use to read and whatever around the house. So I did some research and I looked at like the big Samsung ones that are out and they're they're as expensive, if not more expensive, than iPads at this point. But one that isn't is the all-new Amazon Fire HD 10-inch tablet, 10.1-inch, 10 1080p, full HD, 32 gigabyte, latest model 2021 release, black without lock screen ads, because why would I force my mom to watch more ads? Uh, $184.66, including tax. It's a solid piece. It does everything that my mom would need it to do. It's great. 
and it's like, you know, a quarter of the price of an iPad Air. Well, yeah, an iPad Air. If you just got the regular iPad 10.2 inch iPad Wi Fi 32 gigabyte space gray, that would be $364.26. Okay, so it's half the price of that. Yeah, a little less than half. <laughs> I, I, I know this because I, I've had my uh, 9.7 inch uh, iPad Pro around forever. And mm-hmm. I remembered long ago that I, I'd offered it to a friend of the show, Fogarty, and I took it down to San Diego and I gave it to him with all the cases, which cost 10 times as much as the iPad itself did, and the, the old <laughs> Apple One Pencil. Then when I came home, I realized, oh, shit, that's the iPad I use on my teleprompter when I want to read things on the screen. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, so I ordered an iPad 10.2-inch iPad Wi-Fi 32-gig space gray for $364.26, including tax. Should be right. here in about a week. <laughs> Look, I, I would never use a Fire. I, I'm addicted to my iPad, but my mom is not in the Apple ecosystem at all, mm-hmm. uh, and it does everything that she wants to do easily because yep. she reads on Kindle. She listens to audiobooks. She'll be able to watch uh, you know, shows from Amazon. Pro- it is perfect, perfect. for yep. her. And if, if you're not in the iPad, in the Apple ecosystem, it is a solid, good tablet, and it's cheap. It's funny. I, I had a bunch of the Fire tablets. I had like a 7 and an 8, and I ended up giving them all away to people when mm-hmm. they came over. Like I gave one to uh, my friend Jason Sanderson. He was flying back to uh, Europe. And he's like, I got nothing to do for the whole flight. I'm like, here, have a tablet. Take this. <laughs> have a tablet. <laughs> uh, I, the sad thing is I don't think he could get it all connected and download anything before it went. So he had a tablet that I think he could probably Did play nothing. solitaire on for 10 <laughs> hours or 12 hours. But uh, yeah, I mean, they feel cheap most of the time. I mean, it's like the plasticky thing. It's not. It doesn't have the heft of an iPad, but um, they work. They actually yeah. do work. So for you know 184 bucks for a 10 inch tablet not bad yeah, not bad at all man mm-hmm. I, I recommend it um also something else is out and being reviewed now the apple tv 4k review 2021 this annoys me because i have an <laughs> app i just bought an apple tv 4k 2020 and what? it does not have the new remote <laughs> why did you buy a new apple tv why well did i didn't you- just buy it i bought it a couple months ago for toronto because oh. we needed something over there and, you know. There. Okay, pro tip, man. Get a Roku and then just launch the Apple TV app. That's the best way to do it. I should have done that, but I didn't. Anyways, uh, the review is basically like, this is great, and they finally fixed the remote. And uh, apparently I can just go get the new remote for $60 now. Thanks, Apple. Yeah, or you could just use the Apple remote app on your phone for free. Yes, which is that. Which is what I do, because <laughs> I, I still have an Apple... I have an Apple TV. It's it's the one right before they came out with the 4K with mm-hmm. the the you know the remote from hell. Yeah. But now that I've got the Apple TV app signed, like on, on my Roku, it's literally collecting dust. It does nothing right. that the the <laughs> app doesn't do. So thank God for that. <laughs> I got the Zoom PodTrack P8 podcast recorder. Woo! Okay. You don't have enough things to record podcasts at the moment. Well, I'm doing that show on Adorama. And right. in doing that, there's a bunch of stuff that I want to test. They're sending me a bunch of stuff, but this one I wanted to have for me because I want to test this. And I'm going to test it on this week's show. So if you go to twitch.tv slash Adorama XP on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to do um, kind of a side-by-side of the the PodTrack P8 and the Roadcaster Pro because okay. um, there are definitely some differences there, but uh, the PodTrack P8 is four ninety nine, and the Rodecaster Pro is five ninety nine, which is, I mean, it's a small difference, mm-hmm. but uh, you get six inputs on the PodTrack P8. But the, here's the, the one thing that I totally forgot, which is why I didn't buy it in the first place. It only records at uh, 44 one sixteen bit Okay. So you can't get any high quality stuff. I also got the Bluetooth adapter for the Zoom, but uh, I'll, I'll go into more detail on the show because there's a lot of other reasons I wanted to get something like this. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so far I got it last night. Here's the thing, man. Holiday going in the morning on Amazon. Would you like it today? Sure. <laughs> How much extra? <laughs> Nothing. Free. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> And that is why Amazon is taking over the world. Yes, that's why Amazon is in the middle of so many antitrust lawsuits right now, too. <laughs> but, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, have you ever heard of an app called Drafts? No. I've heard about it for years from the Markdown community because they love it. They love it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I had it forever. And then I'm like, okay, and just over the weekend, I'm like, let me give this a shot again. I opened it up, looked at some tutorials, and ended up buying the Pro Edition Uh, for like 25 bucks a year because it syncs with all your devices then and all that stuff. It does one thing 
it actually does a ton of things, but it does <laughs> one thing really, really well. What's that? I press the button and it gives me a new text document with focus, like set to start typing. That's it. One Shouldn't button, one Every click. editor do that? No. On the, on the <laughs> iPhone, you got to like start a new note. Like if you I use know. the notes app, you got to do all this stuff. This, you press the button, boom, start typing or press the microphone and dictate into it. Right. Then it saves it, puts it out everywhere and you can hit it up later. That cool. alone, because I'm always coming up with ideas. And I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to get the notes and do all that. This one, I literally just press one button, go, done. And then you can do all sorts of stuff with it. It's all scriptable and stuff like that. So it's really cool for just uh, just capturing. You know, it's, it's a starting point for text documents. Cool. So I really, I really am digging it so far. I don't think you would really have that much of a use for it. No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with notes. Yeah. Yeah. I just, when I'm out on the road and walking or doing something and something comes to me and I just want to get it then because I'm old and have had too much booze over my life and I know that it's <laughs> going to be gone if I don't get it in 30 seconds or less. It's perfect yeah. for that. <laughs> and I tried a new, uh, one of them new food delivery there services. Mm -hmm. And this has an app, so I figured it'd be fine here in Apps and Doodads. It's called Cook Unity, a chef collective. Mm -hmm. All right. Socialist. Looks healthy. <laughs> Get, I, we ordered, I ordered six meals mm -hmm. to, to try it out. Got a you know, $25 discount or something for the first round. And uh, we had our first meals yesterday. Mm -hmm. I had some fettuccine with shiitake mushrooms and a nice now, sauce are, asparagus. Are, uh, are these prepared in heat or are these prepared in cooked? heat? Prepared okay, in heat. Gotcha. Yeah. So okay. I figured they're going to be a little more and that's fine. I was looking for preparing heat. I've got enough stuff that I cook all the time. I wanted something for lunch every day that I can just pop in and go that was tasty and delicious and healthy. Well, let's talk about healthy. <laughs> in my household, we don't use salt, period. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so imagine my surprise when I actually dive into the uh, the nutrition facts on these. Um, and they're, salt, they're, salt, 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 salt. Oh, the, well, that's that's how you make these things tasty, Jason. <laughs> the breakfast burrito, or the carbs too. The breakfast burrito, vegetarian breakfast burrito, ninety eight grams of carbs. Just that right there should make you go. I think I'll pass on that one. Uh, take a shot at how much sodium is in the vegetarian breakfast burrito. Uh, half. Uh, well, give me a milligram count. I don't know, man. <laughs> 4,000. Holy crap. Over 4,000 milligrams of salt. Everything else is about 1,800 to 1,200. There's, it, it, I, I bring up those numbers because there's a funny, funny thing you can do when you're setting up your account. You can have different uh, warnings on different types of meals, and it will warn you when something is out of bounds, if it has nuts or if it has milk or things right. like that. And there's mm -hmm. a sodium warning if anything has over 120 milligrams of salt. There are no recipes that you can buy from <laughs> Cook Unity that have less than 120 <laughs> milligrams of salt. That's a shit ton of salt. That is like I'm, I'm my household is the same as yours. We we never add salt to things. We usually like use way less salt than recipes call for. It's just we don't do it. Uh, the other thing health wise is I'm just scanning through these. These are not low calorie. They're, they're not these low are calorie. Pretty high calorie meals. Yeah, they're not low calorie. They're certainly not low carb. You know, yeah. everything's close to 100 uh, 100 grams of carbs, and we're just like, holy shit. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was a failed experiment. So if you want to, I mean, it, the food was good. The uh, the one that uh, Shay had was really good. It was uh, some Japanese noodle type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. She did have to actually pour out half of the sauce and and dilute it so it was yeah. edible because it was so salty. When you don't yeah. eat salt, you know what it's like. When you don't eat salt, oh, yeah. just a little bit is just like whoa, Jimmy. It hits you like a ton of bricks. Yeah, and mine had mine did not taste salty at all. But I checked and it had eight hundred milligrams of salt. I'm like, no, thank you. Okay, well, I'll be passing on Cook Unity then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you will not be if, if 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 for some strange reason you hear an ad in one of our our uh, <laughs> uh, auto generated ads, let me know so I can make sure that we get rid of them. Because yeah. man, uh, yeah, cannot recommend them with a good conscience. And uh, finally, I just saw this, and and it just it it couldn't go any other way. I, it, if you thought, heard that Japan was going to send some sort of robot to the moon. Of course, it's going to be a transforming robot, right? I was thinking an Ibo. <laughs> I was thinking you <laughs> shoot an Ibo to the moon. <laughs> well, it's pretty close. So they are sending a ball-shaped transforming robot to study the lunar soil 
pretty cool. But of course, it had to be a transformer. Of so the... I can't wait to see it. I can't wait. <laughs> this to thing see it. looks so cool. I hope it works. Please don't fail. At the library. Well, I finished the uh, Murderbot Diaries book five uh, about a week or so ago. I talked about it last week, and I figured might as well just roll into book six. Now, book five was the very long one. Mm -hmm. uh, book six is very short. Okay. So this one's called Fugitive Telemetry, and uh, I read it in like probably two days because it's pretty quick. Uh, I seem to remember enjoying it, but I swear to God, not a single detail is stuck in my mind. Okay. That's not a good thing. <laughs> No, it's not a great thing. I remember book five a lot better than I remember book six, and I just finished book six. That was the problem I was having with book three because I kept trying to read it, and I couldn't – I'm like, I read this like three times already, and I can't remember any of this. <laughs> so, oh, well, hit or miss. Hit or miss on the murder bots, but I still well, like them. I still like them. It's a good series. Yeah. I've been reading Code Girls, the untold story of the American women code breakers of World War II by Lisa Mundy. Okay. Uh, great book. Holy shit, what a great book. Uh, I had no idea. I mean, I knew that women were pretty integral into the in the code breaking efforts for World War Two, but I had no idea how integral they were. They basically saved yeah. our bacon. I mean, they're yeah. and they're really good at it. Really good. And why is this not a movie? Uh, you know, it's got to be coming. You know, it's yeah, got to be coming. It's got to be. And I will I will very much enjoy watching it. Yeah, it's a long book, but man, it's really good. It is really <laughs> if you're into into that kind of thing, which I certainly am. It's uh, I mean, I can't recommend it enough cool moron of the week elon is back as moron of the week i know we had a we had a had him on hiatus for a while i mean he's no kanye but he's getting to kanye status <laughs> well i was gonna put the whole texas story in moron of the week but i figured you know mm, yeah i didn't see that you would put this in we could have had a double header we could have had a double header <laughs> Neuralink brain chip will end language in five to ten years, Elon Musk says, and will help self-driving no, cars. <laughs> How long, <laughs> Elon? Let, mm -hmm. let, let's all agree that Elon sucks at predictions. Okay. I, somebody has got it. Like once once he's toked up, get the microphones away from this dude. Yeah, he was uh, he was uh, hanging out with Rogan again. Of course, nothing of good. Course. Nothing good hangs out. It comes from that, you know. But he's saying, yeah, we're on track. I'm like, you have a monkey playing Pong. That's what you've got. And you think that we are going to transcend human language in five to ten years. By the way, if this chip actually does end language, it won't be in the way you think, Elon. It'll be more like, uh, you know, just sitting in the fucking drooling in chairs. Exactly. Yeah. It isn't going to be because we've transcended language and are using our brains to solve the world's problems without language. It's because all we're doing is feeding ourselves little chips that taste good and have too much salt. No, no the first the first actual use case is can we order Amazon? Can, can we navigate Amazon.com <laughs> with our mind? Because then we never have to leave the house. We just think it and it shows up. It's like magic. I have telepathy. Ooh. And I love it. Somebody on Twitter called him Johnny Moronic. <laughs> that's good gold star give that guy a verification check mark i know oh wait that department's gone it's closed <laughs> security ha! i need another countdown song to hum before the four three two one <laughs> On the next episode of Grumpy Eagle Geeks, your top 10 <laughs> countdown songs. Uh, I have to dig up 321 Contact then. <laughs> contact, it's the feeling, it's Sorry, the answer. Uh, all I've got Everything is endless happens. Sesame Street counting songs because of my kid. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 11, 12. 12. <laughs> 12. <laughs> that was the Pointer Sisters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, there's a there's a amazing YouTube compilations that have been put together of different Sesame Street clips for different purposes. It's uh, yeah. It's a uh, it's one of the few time, times I've enjoyed YouTube as a as a parent. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. where were we? <laughs> uh, Dave Bittner is back. Dave is the host of the Cyberware Podcast, co-host of the Social Engineering Podcast, Hacking Humans with Joe Kerrigan, co-host of Caveat with Ben Yellen where they discuss law and policy and surveillance and privacy. And finally, he's the co-host of Recorded Future, where he takes you inside the world of cyber threat intelligence. I often wonder <laughs> what Jason gets up to in between the morning time segment where we record most of the show and then the afternoon segment. Dave 
comes in, and today I feel it was booger sugar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He's dipping into the dog's meds today. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, mean, I tell you, man, I've been watching that Oxy uh, documentary. It just kind of got me inspired. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. uh, for people who are wondering what we were chatting about at the beginning, we have a countdown on our recording software, and it is uh, it has a mind of its own, and it starts... Uh, at six? At six. Randomly? Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know why. I have no idea why, but... Because uh, five yeah. just wasn't enough, Jason. Uh, this one goes to six. They, they must have done A-B <laughs> testing. Yeah. Maybe that's... Yeah. I don't... Yeah. It makes no sense. <laughs> no, yeah. it doesn't. I, they're foreigners. Maybe that's their nod to Spinal but, Tap. Yeah. I don't know. But right. uh, speaking of watching things, I have been keeping up with uh, Star Wars The Bad Batch. Um, it's fine. It definitely feels. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I, I, I'll, I'll finish out the season. I don't know if I'm going to go much further than that. To be honest, it's it's you know the kid is cute and all of that and callbacks. Mm-hmm. You know, you get the rancor and blah 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 blah. blah. Is it better it's than fine. lower decks? Anything's better than lower decks. That's what I wanted to know. Let's okay, be honest. <laughs> um, it's better. But what I stumbled across and started to watch that is. I believe you mentioned that you have been watching it with your kid, Dave. Um, mm-hmm. Star Wars yep. Rebels is actually legit good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't I haven't watched Rebels in a while. Um, we took a little side trip to watch the last season of Clone Wars mm-hmm. before jumping back to Bad Batch. So thanks for the rancor spoiler there, Brian. Appreciate no that. problem. I, I uh, expect you to be up on these things, Dave. <laughs> I know. No, no. I, I don't begrudge you at all. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that that is a safe assumption to make, actually, most of the uh, time. <laughs> listen, but, uh, uh, it, it's not there. There isn't much plot for anything to be particularly pivotal to with the Bad Batch, so I don't think I've really spoiled too much for you. <laughs> no, and one of the, you know, I was talking with with Young Jack uh, about this, and we agreed that one of the weaknesses in Bad Batch and also Clone War, Wars is that they're written kind of like illustrated radio, you know, yeah. like. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm going to walk over here and open this door and, you know, like <laughs> they're priming me, it to be a me. podcast. <laughs> That's what it's going <laughs> to be. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. And Rebels does not feel that way so much. And, and Rebels also has a, like, I would not show this to my kid yet. He is far too young. Um, while mm. it is still cartoony and there are some elements that are definitely in there for kids, uh, that Inquisitor is, is effing dark. Just straight up. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And Darth Vader is not nice. (laughs) No, no. And we were talking about the body count in uh, Clone Wars as well. You know, just like people get a lightsaber through the middle from behind over and over again and are beheaded or – although another thing we were talking about is how sometimes um, there's no pressure or tension because of where these things fit within – the, the movies, yeah. you know, like, well, he's not, he's going to live because he's got to show up for the next movie. Yeah. You know, uh, so. They're, they're, I mean, I guess that, that's the plus with Rebels is that none of those characters ever, well, I guess you can see the ship in re- one of the newest movies and people freak right. out about that. But, uh, you know, yeah, you don't know. I so. think that was the, the, the great part about Rebel One. It's just like. Who, who Rogue One? Huh? I Rogue One. Rogue One. Yeah, you got me on. Yeah. The, you got yeah. me on the Rebel rant. <laughs> uh, Rogue One. I, I I like that because I'm like, who the hell are these people? Are they going to make mm-hmm. it? Are they going to be side characters in the future? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Spoiler mm-hmm. alert. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> in case you haven't seen it yet, they don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and evidently, uh, Chopper the droid is in Rogue One. Also, he's there's a little there's a shot of him somewhere at the ah, base. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, but I I burned through the whole first season of Rebels and actually legit enjoyed it much more than almost any other Star Wars property except for The Mandalorian that has come out recently. So, yeah, it is good. I agree, and and I'll maybe I'll go revisit that one after because we're most of the way through the like I said the final season of Clone Wars. Then we're going to pick up with Bad Batch again, and maybe we'll go back and go through Rebel. Although by that time, uh, well, well, when we should have a lot more new stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it, not until next year, I think, for Mando. We're okay. going to get the Book of Boba Fett, I think, Christmas. Right. That's what I'm so, thinking yeah. of. Yes, yes. So, you know, that's something to look forward to, hopefully. Yeah. It's hopefully. intriguing anyway. So, we'll uh, see. Question Clone Wars, worth going back and watching the whole thing or no? 
Not really. Okay, perfect. I, Saved I me mean, some time. <laughs> yeah. I Saved mean, you a binge. Yeah, worth, worth going to watch the last season of, because I tried to start it. I probably got one season in and just kind of gave up. Should it, I, I heard it got better when it got re-picked up. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not bad. Um, it's just... It, it's a fun either. show to watch. No, no. I, it, let's, let me put it to you this way. If I were watching it on my own, I would not make it through. But right. because I'm watching it with my son, we're enjoying it together and it gives us things to talk about and that makes it worthwhile. So yeah, I don't think Bam Bam sense. is going to really add to the conversation about the universe. Well, so, <laughs> well, you know, maybe you maybe know. you should watch uh, you yeah. should watch Cruella with Bam Bam. Yeah, you got you got a little bonding movie there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, Dino's the barker, so he may be the one <laughs> to really jump in. But Bam Bam does watch the TV whenever we're we're sitting in the bed. Dino will Define sleep, but Bam Bam watch. staring at the TV intently <laughs> and barking mm-hmm. at different passages. Her favorite is Shark Tank. When the Shark Tank theme comes on, she will get her spot and stare at the TV the entire time we watch Shark Tank. She loves yeah. the music, and then she will just intently stare at the TV while we're watching. She's like, oh, that's a bad deal. Don't, don't. And Mr. Wonderful's not. <laughs> no, no. Don't go for a royalty <laughs> deal. Royalty deals are stupid. Don't do it. I can just see it in her eyes. She knows. We had a dog. Pup treats all uh, in on this one. (laughs) Yeah. The first dog we had uh, after we got married, you know, sort of our practice dog. We're going to get a dog and see if how that goes. And then we'll consider having children. (laughs) If the dog survives, uh, we can have a kid. Exactly. That and that <laughs> yeah. was the that was how we did it. And um yeah. so we had this great dog, uh her name was Emmy and she was a soft coated Wheaton Terrier, which is a little uh Irish herding dog. They're they're sweet dogs, very smart. And um she loved to watch the Westminster dog show. <laughs> she would she'd get up in front of the TV, she'd put her paws up on the little stand that the TV was on, and she'd just sit there and watch all the dogs go by. Nice. It was her favorite show. So every year when Westminster came on, she I'm not gonna say she got popcorn, but but it was pretty funny to watch a dog re- intently interested in this dog show. <laughs> Bam Bam, whenever there's a dog on TV, tries to eat the television. Fortunately it's above yeah. the fireplace, but that's also scary because she could break her legs trying to jump at it. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, she would the Westminster dog show is like snacks. She's like, that's snack size, yeah. I want to eat it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so we have a few stories here because it was a Do slow we? week. It was <laughs> kind of a slow week. I'll just throw yeah. these out real quick. Why not? I mean, we got another 10 minutes to fill. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, the FBI is going to start sharing compromised passwords with Have I Been Pwned, which I think is okay. a, a good thing. Why not? Yeah, I think it is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um. From my point of view, this also speaks to what we've been seeing, which is a real concerted effort from both the FBI and from NSA to do a lot more public outreach. They've mm. been really deliberate about this and, and they, you know, they're coming to us and asking to do appearances and interviews. And, and that's the kind of thing that you never used to get from, right. <laughs> especially from <laughs> NSA. They, they never, you know, they never, yeah, wanted, I, I, they, I particularly they lipped. I particularly enjoyed the outreach I got from the NSA this week when they emailed me and said, you really shouldn't have anything with that many carbs. (laughs) (laughs) As I was sitting down with my loaf of bread. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But they're being much more collaborative with both media organizations and folks in private industry. And I think this really points to that. Um, I think it also points to the... uh, to have I been pwned being the pinnacle of this sort of thing online that they recognize this is the yep. alpha database for this sort of thing. So why not be part of the thing that is the best? And it is that. Excellent. I, I for one, endorse this. Yeah, no, good yeah, for Troy Hunt. You idea. know, it's he's really built something there, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, he is. He is. And he's such a nice guy, too. He's like... <sighs> Troy's got it all. <laughs> he's like that sounds he's like, like one the of those speech. guys you look at. <laughs> that t- wow. no, I mean, you, it sounds Man like you crush. Him, like, he's got it. Oh, totally. I mean, he's a handsome guy. He's got a great looking wife. He lives in a beautiful house in Australia. I wish I he's was got, him. Yeah, <laughs> he's just that Troy Hunt is just dreamy. Let me tell you, because <laughs> it started. Your 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 thing started out. And I'm like, he was a nice boy. 
and then he shot the president. Is <laughs> how it kind of no, started no. in my head. I'm just like, oh no, no, no. I didn't I, know that there was such he, a crush going on there. No, no. And the times that I've spoken to him, I've I've interviewed him a couple times, and he's just delightful. You were all a flutter. I yeah. was. I was a little yeah. nervous. You know, I got to talk to Troy Hunt. He's not. I mean, you know, not only is he well spoken and he's got that charming Australian accent, but he's easy on the eyes too. So I got to yeah. tell you, the whole time we've been, you've been talking about this guy because I, I I'm aware of the name, but I've never actually seen a photo of him. All I can see in my mind's eye is the Simpsons Troy McClure. <laughs> No, he, he's not that, but he is. He is. Uh, he's a remarkably handsome man, and and uh, and I can't remember if he has kids or not. But he if has he does, two I'll kids. Bet they're damn, in a, in a very I bet they're, damn I bet they're perfect. Too. Yeah, <laughs> they are perfect yeah, exactly. kids. Right. Yeah, he's got two perfect kids. Perfect. They wife. do their homework. They eat their yeah. broccoli. It is one. It's just. A, it's just. It's bliss. I tell you, yeah. bliss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I. I hate him already. Oh, to be a fly <laughs> yeah. in the hunt household. No, Troy's a good guy. So I, uh, anyway, good for him. Good for him. Good for Troy. Troy, you be you. Love you, man. Okay. Well, this other one was just for shits and giggles. U.S. soldiers accidentally leaked nuclear secrets secrets via study apps. So apparently there are sites where you can go make your own quiz cards and mm-hmm. uh, they stay online and uh, they were found by Bellingcat. And, what uh, is the code to launch this nuke? One, two, three, four, five, six. They could have listened to our show and we knew that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, this is basically them saying that they're learning all the jargon that goes along with their job protecting the nuclear weapons across Europe. Oops. Mm-hmm. Oops. Yeah, and there was some some location information as well, like which vaults are have actually have the weapons in them or not. Which are hot, like which are cold. Yeah, the whole mm-hmm. nine yards. Yeah. Oops. That's That's just great. Yeah. Quizlet, Chegg, uh, Prep, and Cram are the, the ones that they used. They didn't but, use fucked? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Don't! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I put in here, just to sort of revisit this thing that we cannot get enough of, which is uh, this whole thing with online privacy and, and uh, how they're aggregating and combining our information. It's an mm-hmm. interesting Twitter thread from a gentleman named Robert Reeve. Um who evidently works in the ad tech business. I would like um, to point writes, out that the first thing on his Twitter bio is that he is a dungeon master. Yes. Yes. Dress yes. cleaner. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I, and- <laughs> I think that's the... I think it's the Dungeons and Dragons kind of dungeon master, which is... Well, I'd assume, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. I just... Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I read it as Robert <laughs> Grieve, like he's grieving for the future. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Again, Robert, you be you. <laughs> so he writes, I'm back from a week at my mom's house, and now I'm getting ads for her toothpaste brand. <laughs> the brand I've been putting in my mouth for a week. We never talked about this brand or Googled it or anything like that. And he says, as a privacy tech worker, let me explain why this is happening. Let me explain, um, Lucy. Yeah. And what I like about this and how this sort of relates to us is he says, first of all, your social media apps are not listening to you. This is a conspiracy theory. It's been debunked over (laughs) and over again. And then he goes on to explain that they don't need to listen to you and just sort of unpacks as to how they connect the dots between you and the people you've been around. And this is all stuff we've covered before, how they even they'll use location. And in this case, he was at his mom's house for Mm -hmm. a week or so. And so... They use the GPS to say, oh, you're near this person. Well, when this person goes shopping, they use their discount card. And because they use their discount card at the grocery store, we know the brand of toothpaste that they buy. So Mm -hmm. we're going to combine that person's data with your data, and we're going to start showing you ads for the same sort of toothpaste that we know goes into this house. And it's all very creepy. Yes, but it's not listening to us. No. Not listening to us. No, it doesn't need to. Let's make that clear. Again, we don't need (laughs) to. No, yes. they can they can get everything they need by you just giving it up in exchange and, for a discount. And as much as I applaud Apple's attempt to stop things like Facebook uh, from tracking us everywhere and uh, opting out instead of having to opt in or vice versa, whichever, I'm very tired at the moment. Uh, mm. Facebook also does not need that data. There are ways to get it. Right. Yes, right. by signing up by Facebook. That's all you got yes. to do. Yep. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Oh. So I have a link to uh, the Twitter thread and also Mm -hmm. a thread reader uh, unroll of it if you want to check out the details of how he gets into all the the tech there. But 
Uh, regular listeners of this show will find it's a, sort of a rehash of many of the things that we talk about, but it's all nice to have it all in one place. And if any of your friends come to you and say, I think my phone's listening to me, you can send them the link to this. and <laughs> I just slap let them, them now. Read it. I was going to say, just give them a slap. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Batman Robin slap right there. Right, exactly. It. I said, good day, sir. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, finally, we had uh, someone write into us. Neil writes in, says, Hi, Geeks and Dave, listening to you in show 508, talking about the evils of Amazon Ring cameras. Like anyone who's interested in privacy, I like to keep things in-house, but I do have a camera looking at my front drawer and driveway. It's all simply on a Raspberry Pi and a couple of cheap USB webcams. It is seriously easy to do using Motion iOS. The videos and our stills are stored on the SD card. I personally store them for a few days and delete them, but you can easily move them to some clown storage of your choice if you want, and everything is configurable. And he provides some links to that. Mm. Uh, note that it is possible to install the Motion Eye part without it on without its own OS on an existing Pi or other single board computer. Keep up the good work there, fellas, and stop promoting Chrome, Blue Yeti, and Amazon Ring cameras like you obviously do all the time. Stay grumpy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I looked at this. It looks all fairly simple. Um, it's not out of the box simple, which is the problem, right? People tend to be lazy. Well, yeah. the other problem is uh, all somebody has to do is walk up and rip the camera off the house and you lost all your footage. So that's that's the downside of storing it on the SD card. If it's not somewhere else. Well, they don't even need to risk rip off the camera. They can just pop out the SD just card. Pop out the SD card. Yeah. But <laughs> it's easier it's easier to rip the camera off than it is to find the damn slot and pop out the card in my experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Is there nothing a Raspberry Pi can't do these days? Mm -mm. I mean it just it, nope. it is the it's the um it's the tricorder of computers. Yes, right? I hear it, Twitter has installed uh, artificial intelligence on it and is now running the verification program. <laughs> A little callback to some earlier rants in the show, Dave. Sorry. Right, I'll just – I'll take your word for it. <laughs> no, I just – I, I, I want to play with it, but then I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> so – What, Raspberry Pi? Yeah. 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 I even ordered a kit at one point. It is uh, in a box somewhere collecting dust. Yeah, I gave, <laughs> I gave mine away to a friend of the show, Monkey13, when I moved from Chicago the last time. I had Another thing I've learned forever. this episode is if you uh, just want to stop by Jason's house at some point, he will give you all the technology he's ordered and <laughs> yes. not done anything with. <laughs> Actually, So far, I've learned he's handed out uh, uh, Amazon Fire Pads. He's handed out cameras. He's handed out Raspberry Pis. Just go by. <laughs> uh, fries may be gone, but Jason's is still here. I, yeah. had, I had lunch <laughs> with, uh, with some friends this weekend, and I gave him a Sure SM7 being a cloud lifter. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I got extras. What do you I gotta, want? I got to come have lunch with you. And you need to have a yard sale, my friend. That's what you need to do. You need to have Jason's yard sale and ham fest. See, I would and rather give it to friends than get I, – I I tried to sell some of my stuff at a yard sale, and they come up and they offer you 10 bucks, And I'm like, yeah, I just paid $300 for that, so it's just offensive. I would rather give it away than take $10 for something. So and yeah, that is why you that. are not a good businessman. That's why I'm poor. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I get that impulse, though. I mean, because then you feel good about it and you've helped someone out and they're happy and you're happy. Yeah. And, and you can't put a price on that. The only rule is no tech support. If you got a problem, Google ah, that shit. Ah, Google that there's shit. There's the rub. <laughs> yeah. By me giving you this technology does not indenture me to you in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Here is the binding contract for your free item. You will never call me. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. All right. All well, right. Guys, that's all we got this week, right? Yep. yep. Off to go watch more Star Wars. There you go. See you next time. Closing shout outs. Over at Patreon, we've got Peter, Derek, Kelly, and Jake from State Farm. Jake, I hope you're I on the AI. Didn't know you listened to the show. <laughs> I, I, I really hope you're on that AI thing. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Oh, and over at PayPal, we have Simon, Matt, Charles, Thomas, John, Matthew, Charlie, Nicola, Michael, Stephen, Jonathan, Judge, Nikolai, and Eric, who says, get some gumbo, Brian. Jason, you are cool, too. Uh, there was a discussion on Discord about uh, about New Orleans food that I was involved with there and uh, got us a donation, apparently. Thank okay. you. Okay. I like gumbo, too. 
Okay. I really well, you like weren't gumbo. In, you weren't involved in the discussion on Discord. You were in San Diego or something. No gumbo for you. No gumbo for Jason. Jerry writes in, hello, Jason and Brian. I finally donated something to the cause. Thanks for your consistency of great content and humor. I kind of stopped listening for a while, but came back. You blokes are by far the best for keeping up to date with internet-y stuff. I'll donate again soon. Okay, don't hassle me. Jeez. And an emoji. <laughs> yep. And uh, Bonnie writes in. I'm a long, long time fan and sent you Patreon money, but I thought you didn't send you a very few bucks. COVID-19 has been tough. I look forward to you guys each and you make me smile or laugh each week. I might be one of the oldest geeks you have, not in years, but started very young. My family worked on ENIAC, learned base eight in grade school, punch cards, etc. I've begun to hate updates lately. Yet another expert-friendly feature I don't want. Seeking a decent email program, not Snoopy Gmail, any that run on iPads, etc. would deeply appreciate. Facebook is evil. Privacy checklist should have one box. Get lost. Stay grumpy. All right. There you go. Uh, I just use the built-in Mac mail. It runs across everything in my ecosystem. And, you know, Tim Cook is all about the privacy, right? Yeah, I like Spark. Uh, yeah. link for that will be in the show notes, but I like spark. It, it syncs with everything and has a lot of fancy features that I really, really enjoy. And Wendy Lee writes in, hi guys, instead of giving ultra rich Apple any more of my money to hear your pod, I'd rather give it to you. I really appreciate your content and love sticking it to Apple. Thank you for all your hard work for all us grumps. You're the pod that gets me places. Woohoo. Thank you, Wendy Lee. Thank you. And over at iTunes, we have a five-star rating from Mac Dave. Great show. Been listening for a while and look forward to hearing their opinions on things happening in the tech world. I don't always agree, but it is an interesting take. Hey, we don't always agree with each other. No shit. That's, that's the world. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got a big shout out to my brother, Greg. He finally accepted the position of medical physics resident at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Uh, way to go, little bro. And way to make big bro look like a total schlub. Thanks. <laughs> Preach. Keep up, keep up the good work. Yeah, my brother. <laughs> Congratulations, the, my brother, the physicist, and here I am in a garage telling fart jokes and making fun of Elon Musk. <laughs> I make fun of people that are more successful than me. That's my job. Great. We like to punch up. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. And I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. If you enjoyed the show, please consider visiting GOG.show slash donate to help us keep the lights on and we'll love you forever. You can also help us out by sharing the show with your friends and enemies. It's easy and absolutely free. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 509. From there, you can find links to everything we talked about in this episode, as well as links to our swag and Discord channel if you want to buy some stuff or chat with us and other show fans. You can also head over to GOG.show slash contact and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please head over to GOG.show slash review and toss us a snarky review and preferably five stars. And if you want to watch or listen to us on YouTube, you can now go to GOG.show slash YouTube. Stay grumpy.